Hi, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will explain how to configure a Siemens S7 PLC as a Modbus TCP server. Let's get started. First, create a project in the Siemens TIA portal software. Then, click on configure a device to select the type of device you will be using. Click add new device, and a list of PLC devices will appear on the right pane. Choose the type of PLC that matches the one you will be using for this project. Then, click Add button below. The next step is Device Configuration. Click on Device Configuration, then click Properties. Configure the PLC, including network interface settings, set up the IP address, and configure protection and security settings. The next step is to add a new data block. Click on Program Blocks, then click Add New Block. Select Data Block and give it the name MB underscore DB, then click OK. In this table, we will add 50 addresses to store data as holding registers. For the data type, select Array of Integer and set the Array limit from 0 to 49. This will create a set of holding registers with addresses ranging from 0 to 49. Next, add a data connection and name it connect. Choose the data typed can underscore IP underscore V4 for Modbus connection. You will then need to fill in the parameters for the Modbus configuration. Please follow these parameters for configuration. Make sure to configure these parameters according to your specific network and Modbus requirements. Next, add a data element named error with the data type set as bool. This data element will be used to handle error conditions in your Modbus configuration. After that, add a data element named status with the data type set as word. This data element will be used to monitor the status of your Modbus communication.
Next, go to the ladder diagram page. In Network 1, add a Modbus server function block by following these steps. Look for the Modbus server function block in the right pane. You can find it under Communication, then Others, and finally Modbus TCP. Once you've located the Modbus server function block, drag and drop it into Network 1 of your ladder diagram. This will add the Modbus server function block to your program. In the Modbus server function block, fill in the MB hold reg pin with the data holding register that we created earlier. This configuration will link the Modbus server to the holding registers where data will be read from or written to during Modbus communication. Then, fill in the connect, error, and status pins in the Modbus server function block with the corresponding data blocks we created earlier. This step will establish the connections and handle error and status information as per your configuration. As coils represent outputs on a PLC, and my S7 PLC has 8 outputs, we can create tags with the following names and addresses for relay outputs. Relay 1, address Q0.0. .0. Relay 2, address Q0.1. And so on until relay number 8. This configuration will allow us to control and monitor the outputs of our S7 PLC through these name tags. After configuring our project as described, we should compile it and save the project. Compiling the project ensures that it is error-free, and ready for execution on your Siemens S7 PLC. Saving the project is important to preserve our configuration and settings for future use. After compiling the project and ensuring that there are no errors, we can proceed to download the program to Siemens S7 PLC. Downloading the program will transfer the configured logic and settings to the PLC so that it can run the control logic as intended. Make sure the PLC is connected to the programming software and follow the steps to download the program to the PLC. The next step is to test the Modbus communication. Before doing so, it's a good idea to go online with the PLC to monitor its status and observe any changes in the registers as they occur. Going online allows us to interact with the PLC in real time and verify that the Modbus communication is functioning as expected. This allows us to troubleshoot any issues and ensure that our Modbus communication is working correctly. I will monitor the values of the coil outputs, and the values in the holding registers. To test Modbus communication, I'm using Modbus Client X. You can download it from the link I've provided in the video description. Run Modbus Client X and select Modbus TCP. Enter the PLC's IP address and click OK. Once connected, a table will appear to view the status of holding registers and coils.
First, I will change the value in the holding registers using Modbus Client X. We can observe that each time I modify the value at a holding register address, the value in the PLC's holding register will also change accordingly. Next, I will change the values of the coils. In Modbus Client X, I will select the Coil tab, and click on the address that I want to set to true or false. As a result, the output pins on the PLC will change accordingly, allowing us to turn on, or off the relay pins using the coils in Modbus. In this experiment, we can conclude that it's relatively straightforward to turn a Siemens S7 PLC into a Modbus TCP server. We can create holding registers to store integer data, and for coils, they directly correspond to the PLC's outputs, allowing us to control relay outputs using Modbus TCP from a Modbus client. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you in the next video.